Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of limits. And if I talk about the question which is given to us here from this topic, the question tells us to find the value of a limit where the variable x tends to zero and the expression given to us, it says 27 plus x raised to one over three minus three over 9 minus 27 plus x raised to 2 over 3. So we have been told what is the value of this entire limit. And if I talk about the answer choices that are given, they are 1 over 3, minus 1 over 3, minus 1 over 6. And the last answer choice it's given to us as 1 over 6. So we need to figure out which one of the answer choices is the correct answer for the value of this limit. So if I solve this question, we can solve this question using two methods. So I'll take both the methods and make you understand how to solve this question. So let's see the first general method of limits that we apply here. So if I write my limits, x tends to 0, 27 plus x raised to 1 over 3 minus 3 divided by 9 minus 27 plus x raised to 2 over 3. So now what I understand from here is if I try to use my idea of substitution and put 27 plus x equals h, my value of the limit that is tending to that will also change. Here it was tending to 0. If I put x as 0, h becomes 27. So your expression for the limit changes to x tends to 0. This basically if you see it becomes h raised to 1 over 3 minus 3 divided by this becomes 9 minus h raised to 2 over 3. Now, if I try to solve this idea further, I understand that if I want to have the same power 1 over 3 for the second term also, I can write that as limit h tends to so here we should not write x tends to 0. We should have written h tends to 27 directly. So if I write that, I know limit h tends to 27. So limit h tends to 27. And the expression, if you see, it becomes h raised to 1 over 3. Now once I have 3 here, I can also write that in the terms of power of 1 over 3 as 1 over 3 means you're finding the cube root. So if you are finding the cube root, it is nothing but 27. So 27 raised to 1 over 3 will give you 3. And for the denominator also, if I talk, out, talk about in the terms of power of 2 over 3, if I find 27 raised to 2 over 3, I can write that further as 27 raised to 1 over 3, that is squared. So cube root of 27, which is 3, and that if I square it becomes 9. So I can write this 9 also as 27 raised to 2 over 3. So you write this as 27 raised to 1 over 3. Denominator becomes 27 raised to 2 over 3 minus h raised to 2 over 3. So you write that also as it is. Now, if I try to convert this entire idea in the form of expression that says limit x tends to a, x raised to n minus a raised to n, that form I can see in the numerator present as well as in the denominator present, but that should be divided by x minus a. Then I can use the formula n into a raised to n minus 1. So if I have this entire thing present in the numerator and denominator, I will divide both of this by the expression. Let's see. So h raised to 1 over 3 minus 27 raised to 1 over 3. I'm dividing this numerator by this denominator that I have x minus a. So I'm dividing it by h minus 27. So if I'm dividing my numerator by h minus 27, I'll also divide my denominator by h minus 27. So if I do this idea in both the terms, I can further simplify that as limit h tends to 27. My numerator consists of h raised to 1 over 3 minus 27 raised to 1 over 3 divided by h minus 27 for the denominator if i take out minus sign common 
I can convert this also in the same form. So if I'm taking out minus sign common, my expression becomes h raised to 2 over 3 minus 27 raised to 2 over 3 divided by h minus 20. So you have this entire expression. Now minus sign, if I see it is out, so I'm keeping it here. And if I apply the limits, so I have minus sign out, let's say minus 1. So I'm taking this minus sign out. And then if I apply my limits, particularly to both the ideas of numerator and denominator separately. So I'm writing numerator with the limit and also the limit with the denominator. So I have both of the terms and now just if I apply the formula which we just saw, limit extends to a x raised to n minus a raised to n divided by x minus a gives you n into a raised to n minus 1. So if I apply that idea, I can write that as minus 1 as it is n into a raised to n minus 1. n in this case is 1 over 3. a in this case is 27 raised to n minus 1 which is 1 over 3 minus 1 divided by this if you see again n is 2 over 3 a is again 27 raised to n minus 1 which is again 2 over 3 minus 1. so you get this for the 3 and 3 cancelled out you get 1 over 2 here you get 27 raised to this becomes 1 over 3 minus 1 which is minus 2 over 3 this becomes 2 over 3 minus 1 which is minus 1 over 3 so both of this gives you minus 1 half. This becomes 27 raised to minus 2 over 3 plus 1 over 3, which is minus 1 over 3. So that makes it minus half 27 raised to minus 1 over 3. And that gives you further 1 over 27 raised to 1 over 3. And 27 raised to 1 over 3 is nothing but cube root of 27. And cube root of 27 is 1 over 3. So that gives you minus 1 over 6. And that, if you see, becomes the answer for the question asked that matches with option C. So C becomes the correct answer here for the question. Let's also understand the second method to solve the same question. So whichever method you are comfortable with in the exam, you can start off with that and complete the entire question. So again, if I write my limit, it was x tends to 0, 27 plus x raised to 1 over 3 minus 3 divided by 9 minus 27 plus x raised to 2 over 3. So we had this entire expression for the limit. And now once I had this entire expression, if I see, if I put the value of x as 0 everywhere, this becomes 27 raised to 1 over 3, which is 3. So 3 minus 3, this is of the form 0. Denominator. 9, this entire thing, if you see, it's also 27 raised to 2 over 3, which is 3 squared, which is 9. So that is also 0. So you get the form of 0 by 0. And once you get the form of 0 by 0, we understand it's an indeterminate form. And once it is an indeterminate form, I can apply the idea of L'Hopital rule. So if I use L'Hopital rule here to solve my question, I can separately find the derivative of the numerator and the denominator separately. So using L'Hopital's rule, I can just write that as limit extends to 0. This, if I take the derivative of the numerator, x raised to n gives you n x raised to n minus 1, which is 1 over 3 minus 1, which is minus 2 over 3. The derivative of 3 becomes 0. And for the denominator, I have this again derivative of 9, 0 because it's a constant. And this, if I see, it becomes minus 2 over 3, 27 plus x raised to 2 over 3 minus 1, which is minus 1. So you get this. Now, if you apply the value of x as 0, this is not going to turn out 0 and this is also not going to turn out 0. So now once the denominator and numerator are not turning out to 0, you can just apply the limit and solve it further. So if I apply the limit, I get 1 over 3, 27 raised to minus 2 over 3 divided by minus 2 over 3, 27 raised to minus 1 over 3.
So from here, I get this three canceled out. And from here, I get this is minus half. This becomes 27 raised to minus 2 over 3 plus 1 over 3. So that gives me minus half 27 raised to minus 1 over 3. And further, if I solve this, I get minus half 27 raised to minus 1 over 3. If I want to make that power positive, I'll take that in the denominator. And 27 cube root, I know it is 3, so it becomes 1 over 3. That basically makes it 1 over 6. So you get the answer to the question again. And that, if you see, matches again with option C. So C becomes the correct answer here also for the question given to us. I hope you have understood both the methods to solve the question of limits. So the first method, we tried to convert this entire limit given in this form. And then we just applied this formula to solve it and get the answer as option C. And the second method, we used the L'Hopital's rule because when I put the value of x as 0, I got an indeterminate form. So that basically I took the derivative of numerator and denominator separately and then put the value of x as 0. That again landed me to the same answer being C. So you get the answer to the question and that is option C. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And we are going to continue our series of questions on JWE mains. So stay tuned for more videos to roll out. Also, if you're enjoying these videos that we are doing every day, please do like the videos as well and do subscribe to my channel and share these videos with your friends also who are involved in the preparation of questions on JWE. So they can also take the benefit from these questions which we are solving on everyday basis. Thank you.